If you're talking about five seconds of summer and you're not talking about diversity, we're not listening to the same band. everybody welcome back to the channel I'm Steven of course this is Steven in stereo and in today's video we are doing a video that I've hyped up for a while now we're gonna be checking out five seconds of summer with their album young blood now I'm pretty excited to get into this album because I loved calm so much I enjoyed the singles leading up to it and of course the initial release which I did a video on and I was a huge fan that's actually my first five seconds of summer project that I had ever checked out so the fact that I enjoyed that so much on first listen gets me really excited to go back and listen to this album and more of their previous albums. I only know one track on this album, which of course is Youngblood. Uh, I watched the video for it. I absolutely loved it. So I'm really excited to see what they continue to do on this album. Now before we jump into the album, there's a couple cool things. First and foremost, I would love if you guys checked out my vlog channel. Uh, it's Positive Steven. I do a lot more commentary and personal style videos so if you're interested in stuff like that you think I might be kind of cool and you want to check that out make sure to subscribe over there I'm also doing a huge giveaway I am going to be giving away uh, five seconds of summer the calm album on vinyl uh, to enter it is very simple it is open to all US and international it is in no way affiliated with YouTube it is strictly just something that I'm doing for you guys it's completely free to enter make sure to check the link in the description you have to be following me on Instagram you have to be following me me on Twitter those are the two mega guidelines so if you win and I check and you're not following me unfortunately I have to switch it up and give it to somebody else but I'm really excited to be giving one of those away because I have enjoyed this album so much and I don't know I feel like having a physical copy of an album that you love just makes it hit so much different so I'm gonna be giving that away make sure to follow all the steps located in the link in the description so that you have a chance to win and of course I'm available on social media all the time I probably use it too much and you can subscribe and like this channel and this video if you like those things but with all that out of the way we're gonna go ahead and jump into this album because I don't really want to wait anymore This is like my biggest thing about this song is I love how epic the drums come into this. Um, I'm pretty sure you guys were like really stoked that I kept mentioning the drums, but I think it's just one of those songs that has such a mega buildup in it. So right away, this is one of those songs that um, I immediately on first listen, I was in love with. There was just something about the slow paced verse as it would build up, you'd hear those drums keep coming in. And then we get this amazing chorus where uh, these high vocals, which I come to expect from Five Seconds of Summer and I love very much. I feel like they're used a lot in this track in particular. That combined with the video that I watched really just created a really great moment for this song. Now that is the only song I know on this album. And of course this is the deluxe plus the exclusive target track. So we got a lot to dive into. Oh, okay. Those super high notes in the back right there almost sounded like a little bit of a harmony. I am living for this right now. This actually, this song kind of gives me some sort of wild flower vibes a little bit. At least I can hear that in the music at least. Sounds like it's sort of influenced from the same um, genre or era and I like that. I really enjoyed that song. Ooh. That guitar riff is tight. Yes. Yeah, again, I felt like, um, because there's definitely a huge love component to the lyrics here, no matter what happens, no matter what goes on, I'm always gonna want you back. And I feel like it might be some of that that was giving me those vibes of Wildflower. But one thing that sticks out to me right away, one, I love the guitar riff in this song. Obviously, it's fucking good. Um, but I also really enjoyed the vocals in those falsetto notes that were hit in the chorus. Um, I wasn't expecting that. It didn't feel like that would be what would match the vibe, but it worked so perfectly. So I'm stoked for that. This is that obvious moment that happens in every five seconds of summer video where I just have to point out the obvious, which is that this band vocally is so underrated. Like, now that I know that all of the members can sing so well, it just amazes me. I'm, I'm stoked that they chose this route. I'm glad that they were able to go from pop punk to this and 
have this moment of success because all of them could have just been straight up pop stars if they wanted to. But when you have that element of a band because that's what you're passionate about, this is what you end up with. <laughs> We're gonna get a harmony moment like that. I'm gonna fucking nerd out every time. So here's the thing about this band. With a track like this, I immediately think to myself like, this could have been a deeper cut on like a NSYNC or 98 Degrees album back in the late 90s. And the reason I say that is because this group experiments with a lot of genres and we know that and pop music is one of them. And just like I said in the, in the song, they could have done anything as a band or individually, I mean, they could have all been different versions of pop stars. So for them to have a ballad, a pop ballad like this, even though we know there are other types of vibes on this album, it's just amazing to see what they're able to hit um, because I think it's what creates such a broad fan base. It's, it's what creates this moment where you can like rock, you can like uh, pop punk, you can like pop, you can like all of these different styles and you can find something to love about this group. And the fact that they're so passionate about each genre that they do, it's just really incredible. And I think that song is a really great example of what that looks like for a band. So it's tight. Oh. Okay, the cadence of that verse right there is everything. I may be exhausting what I'm saying right now, but when I talk about bands doing different genres so well, I always talk about 21 Pilots. I feel like they're so, a band that has to be brought up because they also do that same thing and they do it very well. And this song is very much reminiscent of a 21 Pilots song. And again, it's another reason that I love groups like this, especially 21 Pilots, Five Seconds of Summer, is that there is no genre that defines them. And you know, we're going track by track. We're getting so many different sounds. It's the same thing I felt about with Calm. I understand that their pop punk albums might not be the same way, but this is incredible already. Just, I love hearing the experimentation from these bands. Hey. What is that? I got nothing but love for you. Fall in love even more every day or something like that. I like that line. So that was definitely a little bit slower paced of a song from them. Even vocally, there wasn't any like super energetic moments. I do love the fact that it was a love ballad style song, at least based off the lyrics that I could pick up on the first listen. So yeah, definitely much more chill vibe from them. Enjoying this like 80s, 90s pop vibe right here. That guitar riff in the back right there, I'm fucking living for that. I think I always look forward to what riffs they're gonna pull out in some of these songs. I kind of wish that Valentine would have had a little bit of like a little love rift going on, but I'm enjoying this riff so much. Hey. Okay, so, so much of a dance anthem here. Definitely a lot of genres being influenced. And one thing that I could notice I don't know how many of the band members were singing, but I felt like I heard three to possibly four different singers in this track. And I love that. The fact that we know that they can all, you know, do these amazing vocal moments, I wanna hear more of that. The instrumentals in this song, that was my dog that sneezed by the way. The instrumentals in this song, 100% um, fucking on point. Like that guitar riff happening in the main chorus there, so good, makes you just wanna dance. I don't even dance, and I wanted to dance to this track the entire time. How are you gonna start a song with vocals like that? Like, that's too perfect. What? Okay, so <laughs> vocals start out with that aggressiveness. Then we get a drum roll that you think is going to start into a punk rock song. And then we drop into a pop punk slash almost like R&B kind of vibe happening all at once. That is why I like bands that cross genres so much. It's not weird that you're naked on your sofa. I feel like that song is a wonderful example of what it looks like when a pop punk band turns into a pop slash R&B band. That's it right there. Those drum rolls were way too aggressive for this to just be R&B. Those vocals, especially in the beginning, 
way too aggressive to be just a pop song. But then we do get those elements coming out of them. And I feel like this song is a great example of what it looks like when a band crosses genres, especially two genres that you don't think would align so well. There was even a guitar riff in the back that was like, dun dun, dun dun. But then it's obviously like, tuned down and, and made more bright to be more of a poppy sound, but you could hear that at the bass, this could have been a pop punk song. Oh. I feel like this band loves to use that clap sound in their, uh, in their songs. At least that's like, I feel like when I think about some of their songs, I always think about the claps. I like that acoustic track. So one of my favorite things about the song right now is that we get this like pretty long pre-chorus and then the chorus ends up just being a drop with some of these like vocal harmonizations happening in the back. But this pre-chorus and this buildup is such a big moment in this song. Ooh. The guitar in the back is so heavy. This almost sounds like a, like a punk breakdown, like a hardcore breakdown. Yeah, that pre-chorus that builds up into that chorus drop is amazing, but I think my favorite part happens in that bridge where there's just this heavy breakdown happening in the back. And again, I think it really points out to what it looks like when bands with different backgrounds come together and create this genre of music. I mean, we're pulling out things from, from punk music, we're pulling out things from you know metal at some points, but we're making you know this pop rock album. And I feel like bands like this get discredited a lot for being just um, boy bands, pop groups, but like there's so much interesting music happening in these tracks. And I always wonder like how close-minded you have to be to not at least give the band a listen to realize that they are taking influence from some of the best things and making this genre. And odds are, if people are getting into this, that they're going and checking out some of what those influences sound like. So in one way, you know, handing somebody a five seconds of summer album could get them into, you know, a Blink-182 or any pop band, Descendants, punk bands, and then at the same time, get them into, you know, 80s and 90s dance music. There's just so many things happening in one track. And I definitely felt so much of that on this one. Another thing that becomes difficult with this band though, is that because everyone sings, I never really know who I'm listening to. It's weird because with every track that you hear, not only does the instrument change, like the instrumentals change and the vibe, but also the vocalist. So it almost sounds like a different band every time. So I love the lyrics to this track. Again, I love to hear them with a love ballad. With your love, I'm a better man. Like, who doesn't want to hear that? That's perfect. Um, the lyrics in the song, really great. And despite all those things, I felt like it's not my favorite song from them. It's a little bit like, for them, it's kind of generic. Knowing that they've got so much potential, I feel like when I hear this song, I'm just not a huge fan of it. But I did love the lyrics and the vocals of it. I guess I just felt like it kind of sounded like too many other songs. And they don't usually do that. So I'm not a huge fan of this one. I'm gonna love this one. I love the instrumental. I have a feeling that more is gonna be one of my favorite songs and we're only uh, 20 seconds into it. Damn. Yeah, this uh, right away, fuck. You can just hear what their past was about coming into this song and I'm absolutely loving the vocals on this track combined with that almost like fucking what do you want to say like new wave but like electronic it's dark almost has like a new metal vibe to it there's just a lot happening with it I almost feel like I'm listening to a ministry song at parts of this those vocals I feel like this album should have just been called all riffs not young blood just all riffs there are so many great riffs in this album already. I don't even know what track we're on. I just, I'm, I'm amazed again at hearing the diversity. I can talk about that all day, but I mean, that's like, if you're talking about five seconds of summer and you're not talking about diversity, we're not listening to the same band because there is so much diversity, not only album by album, just from the last two I've listened to, but also track by track. I feel like even on a slower moving song, they managed to bring something in it that gives it its own flavor and still feels energetic. Leading up to this song, which I'm absolutely a huge fan of the influence into this track. I love the vocals on this so much. Sometimes with this group, it's hard for me to just listen to the lyrics because 
I get nerded out over the instrumentals very easy. I really enjoy something good, something catchy, a riff stuck in my head that I want to learn how to play. And this is one of them. Ooh. See, this is how I know they were a pop punk band. Like this almost sounds like just an emo song right here. So I mentioned that the song sounds like an emo song and then I'm paying attention to the lyrics and I think I nailed it on that. That transition that completely changes up the vibe of this song is pretty much like a standard in this album. Definitely a little bit of a whinier song. Uh, and for some reason, I still was totally into it. I actually love the fact that he's pleading that, why won't you love me? Um, the higher range <sighs> vocals that were happening here is typically my favorite thing. However, going into the chorus, it actually sounded kind of like too much. It almost sounded like a kid. Um, so I wasn't a huge fan of that. What I did love was the obvious node to um, more of those like hot topic emo style bands because I was definitely feeling a lot of that in the in the vocals. Things like um, you know if you were to take like the used and sleeping with sirens and somehow like create like a verse out of those two styles, you would get something similar to this. And even though I loved the main vocal happening in the chorus, I really didn't like that background harmony, which is weird for me because that's usually my favorite thing. I feel like it's one of those songs where I need to know some of the backstory to the lyrics because the, the crazy thing is he's just saying, I woke up in Japan and the vocals are so amazing but like, I can't picture myself just screaming, I woke up in Japan, unless I really knew what was going on here. My guess is it probably has something to do with like, being on tour and his feelings hit him or something like that. But like, can you imagine, like I think of songs where I just wanna like scream my favorite part of the lyric. What if I was just running around, I woke up in Japan. Like I just can't picture myself doing that. However, I do love the instrumentals in this track. I feel like they're, very heavy at some point even like super aggressive for what i'm trying to pay attention to from the lyrics um but yeah my guess is it's going to be something about that something about a moment when he got in his fills i know you guys know so let me know in the comment section what the song is actually about so that maybe i'm stoked to be singing i woke up in japan as loud as i possibly can uh can i just uh give a give a compliment to the amazing piano riff that is happening. Never thought I'd be saying that, but the piano is so good in this. Okay, I love that. Uh, dancing on empty wallets, spending it all on you. Like I'm doing everything for you. At first when I saw the title, I was a little bit nervous as to what the lyrics might be. Not that these guys are out of touch at all. They all seem like really genuine people. But sometimes when you hear like really successful people singing about like not having money and stuff, obviously that's like, okay, well we all know you guys make a lot of money, but I'm glad that he's actually using the moment again, cause I know they're not out of touch to talk about spending that money on this person that obviously he's into. Vocals right here are so good. I actually enjoy hearing the lyrical theme here on top of what sounds like a very heavy instrumental because I don't really imagine hearing these lyrics coming from like that style of group. So I'm glad to hear them not only taking like sounds from different genres, but they're also taking lyrical themes and it's really cool to hear it applied here. It's something very different. Those moments where there's like a vocal, there's like a crowd vocal happening before the chorus, probably my favorite part when it comes to the vocals on this. This is a band that just does a ballad so well. I think it's because I hear so much um, of their energy in so many of their songs. And when I get to hear them do a ballad, I feel like it's such a nice change of pace because it gives you a chance to hear a completely different side to them. Ooh, you gotta let me know who's singing right here. This is so perfect. The fade out to that song with that guitar riff just happening over and over again, such a moment. Can you imagine? Maybe some of you can, you've probably been there. I just picture an entire arena of people 
lighters up, cell phones up, everything, just swaying back and forth listening to this. Such an amazing ballad. I heard multiple vocalists there. Um, let me know the specific one that I called out. Let me know who that was. That was incredible. I guess I should have done something where I could have like watched videos for all these to know who was singing. I'm gonna say something. I feel like in this track, there were moments where I could imagine turning on a contemporary country station and hearing one of these, um, one of these country style ballads playing and it could have easily been parts of this song. So five seconds of summer, more like five seconds of every genre ever, dude. Ooh. Can we address that transition? Holy shit. Let's do it again. The amount of switch ups that they just did in that song was so cool. I, like I said, it started out so like slow and you know, very like emotional. And then out of nowhere, we get this upbeat, almost like dance moment, even though lyrically we're talking about from what I picked up on the first listen. So I could be wrong. It sounds like he was in a relationship. Maybe things didn't work out. Um, they broke up and then he didn't want to get back with her because he didn't want to mess up again because he didn't want to be a monster among men. Now that is the first listen take. I guess it could go another way. It could be that they're talking about being together and then um, him being nervous because he doesn't want to break her heart because he doesn't want to be just another piece of shit dude. There's plenty of them. So he didn't want to be another one. Um, I also enjoyed, there's like some hard rock elements happening here. So I love that, but I'm pretty sure lyrically, I think it was that first thing I was talking about. I think it makes more sense. Those vocals get so aggressive in so many moments and that fit over this dance beat. Just like, it sounds so good. Moments of it actually make me feel like, you know, something that Michael Jackson would have done. It's like a techno, industrial, metal, electronic. <laughs> There's so much happening right there. Dude, I'm just saying, there is so much respect to be given to a band that does not put up a wall around what type of sound they're supposed to be making. You see me almost lose my phone. Um, they have no like fear into trying something out. And you know, throwing that like industrial metal kind of techno metal thing going on in that song, I feel like a lot of artists would have never even imagined doing that, but they didn't care. They throw it right in there. You know why? Because for some reason, every single thing that they try to do just works. It just fits. And it could be that there's so many different styles from the four members. It could be that they all have these different musical backgrounds. The fact that they can all sing certain ways, the fact that they probably all enjoy so many different styles of music, but for them to be able to put all of that on an album, I mean, that's a lot. It's a lot of experimenting. It's a lot of, you got to be doing that with no fear because there's got to be worry that some of your fans aren't going to be into some of these, um, some of these styles that you use. But like for me, I listen to a lot of different music. This band I love because you can put it on and you can put it on shuffle and it's like listening to a playlist of so many different groups. They did the switch again. You see, they had to build up like it was going to be big and then we got this slow acoustic moment. This, feel, this song feels like it should be on the radio. Maybe I'm wrong, but how the hell was this not a single? Maybe it was a single, but if it wasn't, what the fuck? They're missing out here. This this is such a radio friendly, but at the same time still fun song. I feel like this would be a wonderful song for promo. You know when you hear a song and you just know that musically, the algorithm would work so perfectly for it on the radio. There are slow moments, there are instrumental moments that people are going to love, there are singing parts, there is high energy, um, emotion, all those things together, that's something that people wanna hear on a radio. So I really hope that if it wasn't a single, that, I mean, it's too late now because they already have a new album out. But this song should have been promoed more, way more. This is so good. I'm surprised I haven't heard it before. I'm gonna do a little bonus because that was the deluxe edition. Um, I'm going to check out the Target tracks because I know that a lot of you guys were saying that those were three exclusives that weren't on the album that were really good. So I am going to check those out as well because I felt like it only made sense to listen to the complete version of what um, Youngblood was supposed to be. So let's do it. 
Ooh. I can feel it in my bones. You don't love me anymore. Take away all my pain. Is that what he said? I like that. I always get so bummed when I hear about exclusive tracks um, on like only specific uh, like releases because a lot of people in the world can't get those things. And sometimes they save really like this song would have been so cool on the regular release anyways. It's upbeat. We're getting a little bit of dancing. We're getting some really good lyrics here. And I hate that because then like so many people miss out. I mean, fortunately there are people, beautiful souls who put these things on YouTube. Um, but you know, I just, I understand the point of it, but I always just get bummed about it. Like just let us have all of the music. The band wrote it for all of the fans. So let us have it. I would still bury that body for you. Fuck yeah. Okay, so um, I don't know if it's just the version that I'm listening to, but the audio on this is terrible. I'm assuming that someone recorded it with something else and then just put it on YouTube because it doesn't sound very good. So I hope that's not the actual mix. I have a feeling it's probably not. I feel like the song is a little cheesy, but at the same time, parts of it I really like. So you're basically just, you know, telling everyone like, you're my best friend. I'm literally, like he says, I, I would literally go and bury a body for you. Um, he even says what? It's a kind of a cheesy line, but he says, you know, something about when you have the flu, I'll still get close to you even when your face says, It's like one of those cutesy but cheesy things. Um, but I really do wish that the version I was listening to had better quality because the chorus seemed to have a lot more going on to it and I enjoyed the vocals. I just feel like I probably missed out on that because of whatever crappy version this was. So I can't tell. I think lyrically this sounds like maybe this dude is a booty call. At least that's what it sounds like. You only want to love me after midnight. You never want to see me in the daytime. So that's exactly what it sounds like. And it sounds like when he says, but it's better than nothing, he would rather be that booty call and, you know, not be going on dates with you and stuff than to not be able to have your love at all. So I enjoyed the lyrics because it sounded like, you know, he was into this girl, he really wants to be with her and she only wants to see him after midnight. And I think we've all been there. I think we've always had like a significant other that we wanted in our lives, but maybe they just wanted to bang. And uh, I think this pretty much summed it up pretty well. I felt like the uh, song itself was kind of generic, kind of bland. It didn't really feel like anything, um, anything I was really expecting from this band. Um, so I'm okay with it being a Target exclusive. I don't know that it was really necessarily my favorite song. Um, while I did enjoy the, the fact that they were doing kind of gang vocals the whole time, all kind of singing in the chorus and stuff, I just felt like the song didn't have nearly as much um, like heart and energy as a lot of the rest of this album did. So yeah, that's my take on that song. Okay, so I finally checked out the Youngblood album from Five Seconds of Summer and I wanted to tell you my thoughts. So first and foremost, it's what we listened to like 19 songs just now. That's a lot of songs on an album. Typically, I don't even consider checking out albums that are that long on the channel because these take so long to make. But I knew this one was really wanted and I really wanted to listen to it and I'm glad I did. I got so many tracks here of Five Seconds of Summer really showing diversity. And I said the same thing about Calm. And as you guys know, Calm for me, no skips. Like I am so invested into that album. It is so good. And going into Youngblood, I had a similar idea in mind of what the general sound was gonna get, and I pretty much got that. There were a couple tracks on here, I can't think of the names right away, that, well, other than Midnight, that were a little bit more bland and generic for me, knowing what they are capable of, seeing so many sides of them, and a lot of that could just come down to personal preference and taste. It may be someone's favorite song, so I'm not here to shit on anybody's favorite song. For me, they just weren't my personal favorite, especially when I had 19 tracks to choose from and I loved like 15 or 16 of them. So that's really great for an album. That's a lot of songs to listen to, to find that many that you enjoy. This is one of those albums that I wanna to listen to more and more because I felt like there were some lyrical themes that I didn't even get a chance to dive into because there's so much to pick up just on that initial listen of an album. I definitely need to go pick up a physical copy of um, Youngblood for myself. It's hard because I got the Target Edition tracks. There's a bonus one. And most vinyl copies don't aren't usually the deluxe editions. They're usually um, like the standard release just because of how many discs it can take. Uh, so I definitely have to look and see if that's an option because this is definitely something I want to listen to. 
on the turntable, throw some speakers on, hear some of that production really coming to life because there's so many great elements of that here. A lot that I noticed in this was that we had a lot of um, a lot of the band members singing at the same time, um, switching up in the verses, which I don't know necessarily that I picked up on a lot of that in Calm. So I feel like Youngblood was a moment where they really were trying to, you know, utilize all of their vocals, and I enjoy that. It is hard when I don't know too much to define each voice to decide who was singing. So that's something that I'll definitely have to check out in the future because um, yeah, there were moments where like I hear a vocal that didn't sound like them at all and I couldn't wait to hear who it was, but then I don't know enough. And all in all, I think it's important to tell you guys that I will, will have this album on rotation because there are just so many moments in this, so many amazing guitar riffs, so many beautiful melodies. I love the harmonizing in this and the fact that again, I am going to stand and appreciate a band that has no fear when it comes to testing the limits of what their use, what their fans will listen to, of what their music can sound like with a genre added in here. I even heard contemporary country elements in one of the tracks on this, and I think that is very brave to go and push so many boundaries, but at the same time, look at the fan base that they have. Look at the following that they have. There's a reason why they've been able to reach so many people, and it all comes down to being able to have that broad taste in music. I mean, I love the fact that there are so many genres of music. I love the fact that for every mood, you can turn on something else. And one thing I like about this album is I feel like I could throw this thing on shuffle and almost have a playlist of an entirely, just all these different genres happening at once. And that's huge for a band to accomplish. And they've done it, they've done it again. And I was a huge fan of Calm, I still am. So I still enjoy Calm, I think, more than Youngblood. But remember, I've listened to Calm like 20 times. I've listened to Youngblood once on camera for you. So that, like with all albums, will change and grow on me more and more as I listen to it. But I really hope you guys like today's video. I know you've been requesting it a lot. Make sure to enter the Calm Vinyl Giveaway, I will be, um, the link will be in the description. Remember, it is not affiliated with YouTube. US and international can enter. You just have to follow the steps in the link in the description. Make sure you are following me on Instagram and Twitter. It is vital to winning that you are following me on those. But I'm really excited to give that um, one of those records away because I enjoy that record so much. And who knows, maybe for the next one I give Youngblood away because I definitely have to hunt down a copy for myself as well. If you guys like today's video, please let YouTube know by liking the video. You can also subscribe to the channel. You can also subscribe to my vlog channel. Make sure to support the page on Patreon. I have access to all kinds of cool exclusive posts and fun things are going to be happening over there. And yeah, I'm really glad you guys wanted to hang out, stop by. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.